Governor Gavin Newsom's budget proposal calls for billions of dollars to combat climate change. This comes after European researchers said the past seven years have been the hottest on record by a clear margin. And some local health officials say it's all taking a toll on children's health. Joining us now to talk about that is Dr. Mary Prunicky with Stanford School of Medicine. Thanks for being here with us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And scientists have warned that greenhouse gas emissions continue to rise. How critical is the situation right now? And what is your message to the government when it comes to fossil fuels? Well, um, the World Health Organization has declared climate change the single biggest health threat of our time. So I think it's pretty clear that this is a very serious problem impacting all of us, but especially vulnerable populations such as children. And we've seen how natural disasters like wildfires are becoming more destructive and more frequent. And part of that is due to the carbon emissions released from wildfires. What do you tell people who are skeptical of climate change? Um, well, climate change is not going away and it's already caused, you know, health impacts and, and many types of impacts around the world, both direct and indirect. And, you know, our health is, is being impacted. Um, with wildfires and increases in air pollution and other um, events associated with climate change. There's an increase in the um, global uh, carbon dioxide emissions, um, especially from fossil fuels. Um, and this problem is only gonna, going to get worse unless we um, you know, attack it directly and uh, uh, you know, do what we can to minimize the impacts. And you say climate change has a direct impact on our children's health, particularly when it comes to wildfire smoke. Why is it so hazardous to our health? Well, we know that wildfire smoke contains lots of toxins. Uh, the majority of the smoke is particulate matter, um, small enough to go uh, into our uh, lungs and cross over into our bloodstream and cause problems. We know that for children, it causes increases in um, asthma exacerbations and other types of respiratory problems. And all of this has an impact on their school, their performance, um, their overall health. Um, one in 13 children have asthma. And, you know, uh, school absenteeism due to uh, uh, even just asthma is a problem. Um, and so, we also know from a recent study that wildfire smoke is 10 times more toxic than typical air pollution. So it's something we really need to pay attention to given that the wildfire season has only lengthened and gotten worse. And health experts have talked about how important it is for schools to upgrade their ventilation systems, not just because of wildfire smoke, but also because of COVID. In general, how would you rate the air quality at California schools and how does that impact learning? Well, we really don't have a systematic way to um, know what the indoor air quality is of our schools. And that's something we should probably think about um, being able to um, prioritize. Um, but we do know that indoor air quality can be as bad as the outdoor air or perhaps even worse. And we also know that uh, the quality of the air inside a school will impact learning. So poor, poor air quality is associated with uh, worsening test scores, increased absenteeism due to, you know, uh, uh, chronic respiratory um, disorders like asthma. And so we know that it's a, um, it's a, it's a large problem that really needs to be addressed um, so that uh, children um, are able to optimize their learning. Um, and this is especially true for the vulnerable populations um, those um, of color, minority um, uh, uh, populations whose schools may not have the luxury of having things like good air filtration, air conditioning, and things like that. And as wildfire seasons threaten to become even longer and more intense, what else do you think schools should be doing to, to keep students safe? Um, I think monitoring the indoor air quality um, is, is step one. Um, you know, providing the best filtration possible for the kids and having um, some type of systematic um, uh, way of determining when schools should close or when sh schools should stay open and let especially those less fortunate who may have um, worse air quality at home 
um, come into schools uh, uh, and um, thrive as much as possible. And you talked about asthma. You also say more children are developing longer lasting effects, particularly when it comes to allergies. Tell us about that as well. Yes, so studies have shown that with the increase in climate change, um, it's changing the, um, the length of the pollen season. So uh, uh, the pollen season um, is starting earlier and lasting longer. Um, in addition, the increase in temperature makes the pollen more allergenic. So no long, not only are they being exposed to um, pollen for a longer period of time, but when they are exposed, it tends to be worse. And all of these things, uh, you know, make uh, allergies for both kids and adults worse. Important things to think about. Dr. Mary Prunicky with Stanford School of Medicine, thank you so much. Thank you.